This is the Audi RS5, and over here we've got the Lexus RCF. Both of these ultra-high performance coupes feature wailing V8 engines, sport-tuned suspensions, and of course the ability to hit 60 miles an hour in just four and a half seconds. Picking a favorite is not gonna be easy, but it will be a lot of fun. All right, in alphabetical order, let's start here with the Audi. But before I head out on the street, I want to talk briefly about both of these cars' interiors. Since I've reviewed them both in various forms, be it the A4 or RC350, I'm not going to spend much time talking about their cabins. The Audi's is as clean and elegant as ever, but it's been around for so long, parts are starting to fossilize. Contrast that to the Lexus cockpit, which has more going on than a Hieronymus Bosch painting with various terraces and sort of incongruous shapes. They're both good, but I'm not totally in love with either at this point. Infotainment technology is also worth mentioning. Audi's MMI system is like an old friend. It's familiar and easy to use. Now compare that to the Lexus's remote touchpad, which brings a laptop pointing surface to the automobile. This interface is catastrophically challenging, even with clever haptic feedback, and really, it shouldn't be this hard, guys. Well, with all of that out of the way, I'm here in the RS5, and undoubtedly the star of this four-ring circus is a 4.2-liter V8. It delivers a whopping 450 naturally aspirated horses all the way up there at 8,250 RPM. And Redline, well, I think it's higher than the International Space Station. The engine zips like a hummingbird, though it's still surprisingly flexible at lower speeds. Keeping its eight pots on the boil is a seven ratio dual clutch automatic. This gearbox shifts faster than the eight speed unit found in the RCF, though it can get confused. If you nail the gas, sometimes there's an awkward delay before real acceleration starts as the clutches kind of sort out what they're doing. Also, on occasion, shifts can feel pretty shabby, though fortunately that is a relatively rare occurrence. Now, as an added benefit, this car has absolutely no qualms about dropping down all the way into the basement. First gear when you're going about 30 miles an hour and revving to seven grand. Try that in the Lexus. She ain't gonna do it. Can you say wet blanket? As for ride quality, the RS5 is fairly stiff and you definitely feel the road in high fidelity. Now, it's steering has pleasant heft to it once you're underway, though you don't get a lot of road feel, a sensation of what those front tires are up to. Luckily though, it does come with a flat bottom wheel, which let's be honest, adds at least 15 horsepower, though probably closer to 20. Unfortunately, this vehicle weighs more than two tons, so it's really not all that involving. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still a lot of fun, but it's the engine that does that, not lightness and tossability. Ultimately, I think a Miata probably delivers more satisfaction and for a lot less money. The RS5 is an absolute joy to wind out. It's got this frantic wail that's reminiscent of an F1 car, but the RCF here, it's five liter V8 is a different animal entirely. It's definitely more Woodward Avenue than Watkins Glen. Judging by this thing's throaty rumble, it should have a build date sometime around 1963 because it rumbles like an American muscle car. Despite being less frantic, the Lexus actually feels a bit faster. With a slightly lighter curb weight and a few more ponies, 467 to be precise, each horse is saddled with around eight and a half pounds. Now, the Audi's weight to power ratio is a little bit less favorable at about, let's see, carry pie, subtract that, at roughly 8.9 pounds per horsepower. Now, one thing about driving the RCF is how confined it feels compared to the RS5. In fact, it's nearly four inches narrower inside. Additionally, outward visibility is more restrictive, and that is never a good thing. This car's transmission may shift less quickly than the dual clutch box found in the RS5, but it is generally better behaved. 
However, there is one downside, and it's the paddle shifters. There can be an uncomfortably long delay between when you hit the button and when the transmission responds, which is kind of odd for a performance car. you think it would shift a lot faster than it does. In the ride and handling departments, Lexus's RCF feels a bit more compliant than the Audi, though not by much. Also, I'd rate its steering as pretty much equal, tight, but not telepathic. Curiously, the Lexus requires a lot more course corrections to keep it going straight, and it feels considerably larger. Figure that one out. Both of these machines are intoxicatingly speedy, seriously stylish, and reasonably satisfying. Yes, they will put a huge smile on your face, but dynamically, I think both of them could be a little bit more involving. You see, there is so much technology here. The cars do much of the work themselves, and of course, that makes them fantastic daily drivers and absolute rocket ships, if perhaps not the world's best canyon carvers. When it comes to pricing, the Lexus has a sizable advantage in this comparison. As tested, it costs $73,760, including destination fees. The Audi here costs nearly five grand more, though of course you do get quattro all-wheel drive. Well, picking a winner here is tough, as these are both extraordinarily enjoyable cars. But at the end of the day, with its subtler styling, roomier cabin, and higher winding engine, it's ultimately the Audi's fob I keep reaching for. Picking a favorite is not going to be easy, but it will be a lot of fun. So come on, let's go. All the way at 8,250 RPM. This thing gets passed by Buicks. To be fair, that was a Regal. It's one of the fastest cars ever made. I'm pretty sure it's one of the fastest cars ever made. You can check that, but I know I'm going to be right. Three, two, one.